if you are not in the Word of God daily, you will not have the influence in your life that is necessary for you to sustain the love of God daily in your life. The enemy doesn't want you to read your Bible every day. He gives you every excuse in the world in order for you to operate in faith and operate in the mode of trusting God. It must be done daily. Look, you say, well, that, that's a lot to ask. Listen, Jesus going to the cross was a lot to ask. You reading your Bible is not much to ask at all. All right, all right, all right. Hey, if you're a dad, wait, wait. If you're a dad, stand up and, and, and uh, stay, remain standing if you're a father. Okay, uh, someone get near, just, just get up. If you pray, if you actually believe God when you pray, if you don't believe God when you pray, don't touch him, all right? Uh, Greg, you're not standing up. Are you a father? All right, stand up, Greg. You're at the camera. You're not at a tombstone. All right, all right. So someone go over and touch each one of the fathers. We want to just bless them right now, bring the blessing of the Lord. Come on, you can touch me. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just pray for them now. Just say, Father, this year, we ask you bless this father. Bless them for their sacrifice. Bless them in their walk in you. Bless them that they can hear the hearts of their children. And more importantly, hear your voice concerning your children. In Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Someone give God a hand clap. All right. Well, you know, really, uh, we could just stop right now, and my, my plate would be full. Man, this, is, this, has, been, this has been a good meeting. Um, but I, I think that the Lord's not done yet. How many left room on their plate for a little bit more from the Lord? Wave your hand at me. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Who will give me 15 minutes? Yeah, 15? Yeah, 15, 30, 45, an hour. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. Um, I, I, I bring you greetings from uh, uh, Icha and uh, Haucho and Lima, Peru. Uh, all weekend long, I was, um, I was online teaching the church in, uh, in Peru, and... Um, um, they send their greetings to you, and just want you to know that the church is alive and well in Peru. Here's, here's what's crazy. So I'm teaching on kingdom finance, right? I'm teaching on kingdom finance, um, and, um, and these people are making $100 a month. And I'm teaching them about tithing, and you know what? They're receiving it. We're so blessed, and, and why? why? Why is it? Because they understand the principle. They understand this is being obedient to God. This isn't, like for them, it's, it's when, when they hear truth of God, they immediately grab hold of it. They're so hungry because they have so little. And, and, and my, my concern is that, that we have so much here that, that we can eat from in our smorgasbord of life that we don't push back from the table enough to get hungry for God. And so because we're not hungry for the things of God, we're not obedient to the things of God. Uh, um, I just want to talk to you as briefly as I can. We've been talking several weeks about the three baptisms that are coming. The baptism of fire. Say the baptism of fire. The baptism of love. And the baptism of power. I believe those are three baptisms that are coming. Why? Because God is about to do a work on the earth that we have never seen. He has caused the earth to get paused. Have you ever seen such people of influence whose influence has been stopped dead in their tracks? Sports figures have been stopped dead in their tracks. They don't have the influence that they once had. Musicians are stopped. Their concerts have been completely shut down. There has been no influence. There's been a little bit on Facebook, but for the most part, their influence has been stopped. Um, uh, Hollywood stopped. That all the theaters have been closed. 
all over the earth have been stopped. Can you imagine if a year ago I would have said to you that every influence that is influencing the earth would be stopped? The only thing that has continued has been what? The political influence has continued. And that's the one spirit that has risen up, that has had a voice much louder than all the other spirits, the political spirit. God told me before this, this COVID thing had surfaced, God told me that the political spirit was going to try and, and bring influence over the earth and that we were to rise up and begin to pray against the influence of that political spirit. Some of you remember me telling you about that long before any of this happened. Now, I say that to say this. None of this has God by, like, surprise. None of this has God biting at his nails. None of this has, is, God knew this was going to happen before time even began. He knew and he put a plan in place. And you are part of that plan. You and the influence you have over the earth are part of that plan. Remember, demons, spirits, have no control on the earth except for what we will yield to and give them. Are you with me? A, a, a demon can't do anything unless a human being yields to that demon. Are, are you with me? Does that make sense? And so, so look, we have authority. Touch someone and say, we have authority. And so what God is doing, he's bringing a baptism of fire that will cause purity in his people. Say purity in his people. There has been a season where the people of God, the men of God, women of God, children of God, have been influenced or even soiled by the world. And the coming fire is about to cleanse God's people from that soiling and purify. What is unwilling to be cleansed will be consumed. The next baptism is the baptism of love. <coughs> Excuse me. Everyone say agape. 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 Sacrificial, self-giving, self-sharing. It's the highest, it's the condition that is necessary for the people of God to bring the kingdom of God to the earth. And the third baptism is the baptism of power. Now, I want to talk a little more about the baptism of love. But this week, when we studied in the Word of God, and listen, may I suggest to you, if you are not in the Word of God daily, you will not have the influence in your life that is necessary for you to sustain the love of God daily in your life. I'm going to say it again. And you can say amen or oh my, amen. But, but listen to me. Men, I want you to listen to me. The enemy doesn't want you to read your Bible every day. He gives you every excuse in the world for you not to read your Bible every day. But God knows that you have to immerse yourself in his word in order for you to operate in faith and operate in the mode of trusting God. It must be done daily. Now, you say, well, are you telling me I'm in sin? If I... No, I'm not talking about sin or not sin. I'm talking about what you must do as men of God to lead your family correctly. You cannot lead... You cannot lead your family correctly unless you're immersing yourself in the Word of God. Your good ideas are not enough. What you learned yesterday is not enough. Look, the traps that the enemy set yesterday are not the traps that he's setting today. In order for you to be able to be equipped to, to combat what the enemy is trying to lay in front of your sons, in front of your daughters, in front of your wife, you have to be immersed in the Word of God to get the, the current today understanding of what God wants to pour in you. Look, you say, well, that, that's a lot to ask. Listen, Jesus going to the cross was a lot to ask. You reading your Bible is not much to ask at all. Come on, somebody. Say amen or oh my. Amen. You say, oh, I've heard this before. And you're going to hear it again, too. I never, I never claimed to be Dr. Feelgood. All right? I love you enough to tell you the truth. Women, 
You need to be in the Word every day. You cannot, listen to me, you will become ones who nag your spouses instead of giving them the truth of the Word of God. Men, don't point, don't say amen. Don't bump your wives, all right? Listen to me. You do not want to... Because why? If I don't have current revelation from the kingdom of God, then I'm left to fall back on what I've known. What I've known in the past, that may not be a good thing. Come on, somebody. Young people, you must be in the word of God daily. Listen to me. From the ages of about 12 years old to the age of about 24, 25, the enemy is looking to, like a submarine with a torpedo, looking to sink your ship. He is looking for ways to punch holes in your walk with God so that he can have access to you, so that you don't become the person that God designed and created you to be. God fully intends on raising you up as the men and women of God that will change the earth. But so many times, the enemy has torpedoed young people's lives and caused their lives to sink deep into the depths of the earth so that they couldn't rise up and become who God intends. And because of that, we don't have the leaders that are necessary to move our nation. Why do you think our nation is in the condition it's in? Not because of the politicians, not because of the sports figures, not because of the musicians, not because of Hollywood. Stop blaming heathens for the condition of the earth. Take responsibility and say, God, I am positioned singularly to change the earth. You only give me the ability to change me and no one else. And if I don't take that seriously, then I'm going to put the earth in a position that it doesn't have my influence to affect what it is that God positions me to affect. You are positioned perfectly on this earth to exact the necessary change that will cause a chain reaction that will cause the kingdom of God to increase on the earth in a way that you could only possibly imagine or dream of. But if we abdicate our position as the sons and daughters of God, we will miss what God intends us to do. And then he'll have to allow darkness to have its way for a season and then raise up another generation. I feel God's heart when it comes to generations failing him. I was before the Lord the other day, and the Lord just gave me just the slightest glimpse of the generations that have failed him. The generations that refused, the generations that became selfish and absorbed, the generations that were more concerned about looking like the world than looking like a son and daughter of God that he's called them to be. And because of that, they couldn't conform to his image, but they become something disfigured. And again, another generation had to be raised up in order to change the earth. Look, make no mistake, the Lord will get us there. But are you part of the solution or are you part of the problem? May I say this to you? He's given us the precious word of God. 15 minutes, a half hour a day in the word of God and in prayer will make all the difference in the world and eternity. It's a sacrifice. But just like giving our tithe or paying our offering, studying the Word of God and spending time alone with God, I mean, for me, I look forward to it every morning. it's, It's a joy for me. But I understand until you get into the groove, it can be a chore. I I get that. Until you develop the relationship I get that, but I promise you this. Just like you sacrifice with your tithe and offering, and God promises to move you into the place of more than enough, you sacrifice your time for the Lord, and you allow yourself to be moved into the place of spending time with him, eating of his word, and his word becoming alive on the inside of you, giving you the solutions for your day. When you do that, then all of a sudden that will give you more than enough to take care of every problem in your day. Did you ever go through your day and you think your problems multiplied? Come on, somebody. Take time and spend with the Lord. 
And I'm telling you, his solutions are more than enough. He will, he will deposit within you everything you need for the, the problems that are going to come your way throughout the day. Are you with me? Make sense? Give God a hand clap if you believe that. <clears throat> okay. Why is it so important to be in the Word? I mean, come on. Because either it's just a book or it's something far more. Touch someone and say it's either a book or something far more. So what is it? I mean, I mean here I, I, I have it on my iPad. Who has a paper Bible here? Does anyone have a paper Bible in here? Thank you, Edwin. Can you bring that to me, please? Thank you, God. Good. Beautiful. Do you have a crank on the front of your cart? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> look. 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 It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what format the word takes. The, the, this physical paper... This physical paper is not what's holy. The, the ink on here is not what's holy. The, 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 the formation of these words or phrases or paragraphs or chapters or even books, they're not what's holy. They represent what is holy. Thank you. Okay. See, well, can I borrow one more, for one more second? Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Taking his Bible from him. So... So in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, every, everyone say this, in the beginning, in the beginning was, the word. was the Word. The Word was God. Go ahead. And, and, and the word, word is God. Yeah? Okay, that's, that's good. That's, that's all right, that's good. All right, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And, and if you go down, in, in, yeah, and the Word was God. And go down to verse 14, it says, and the word, the word became flesh. Now, it, they didn't take a scroll and hold it up and go, okay, God, do your deal, and poof, there was Jesus. Right? That isn't what happened, is it? Because why? These, these pages are not the word. They're a representation of the word. Are you with me? The word is much bigger than this. As a matter of fact, it even says, look, if everything that Jesus did was written down, it, we, we couldn't contain all the volumes that would be needed to write down what he did. The word is much bigger than this. This is just a representation. Are you with me? Are we okay on that? I, I've seen people, they, they, they take the paper and they make it to be what's holy. Please don't reduce the word into that. It is much more than just this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and His name is Jesus. Thank you very much. Your elder brother, in concert with Holy Spirit, reduced himself into letters and stories and proverbs and history and pulled it all together into this written form that we call the book or the Bible. And even though those pages are not what's holy. When we read them, when we partake of them, something supernatural takes place. Can I have that back, please? <laughs> see, see when, I, 
When I take this and I open it and, and I begin to read, as, as, I, as I am with Holy Spirit, something supernatural takes place. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 5, the Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails, but the unjust knows no shame. See, see, those are just words, except when Holy Spirit gets in the midst of them and ignites them on the inside of the believer, and they become light, they become revelation, they become power on the inside. Why? Because it's Jesus sharing himself somehow, supernaturally, even though this doesn't represent all of him, it's enough that it gives us enough that he can take and add to. And when Holy Spirit takes the word that you're reading and gives revelation and understanding, we receive a portion of Jesus that we never Ever had before. It's him sharing himself with us. Why would you not want to do that every day? Why would you not want to partake of Jesus every day? Every day it's here, right in front of you. I don't think, look, if you don't have a Bible, before you leave this place, we will put a Bible in your hand. Stop at the bookstore, and if we don't have enough Bibles back in the bookstore, I personally will go out and buy them tomorrow, and I will deliver it to your house. Please don't leave this place without a Bible. If you don't have one, I want to put one in your hands. Why? Because I so believe in what takes place when you sit down with the Lord and you begin to read the written word of God. There's something supernatural that takes place. Amen? I think I'm going to let you have it for good now. I break the hardness off of men. I break it off of you in Jesus' name. I break the deception off of you in Jesus' name. I break it off of you in Jesus' name. You cannot sustain an incorruptible life if you are not into the word. I'm sorry, you just can't. You cannot become the man that God called you to be unless you are in the word. On every man in this place, whether you're a father or a son, you're one of the two, just stand with me right now. Lord, it's not easy being a man. You know I've tried it just about my whole life. And I find, it to be, I find it to be very difficult. I know there's a lot that don't believe that. But it's not easy being a man. Not in this world. And I stand with my brothers and my sons and fathers. I stand with them now in the mighty name of Jesus and I break off the deception from their lives that says that they don't need you daily. They don't need to eat of you daily, of your written word that you said that we're to be in. I break it off of them now in Jesus' name. Men, if you feel free to, and please, don't, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do this. But I want you just to lift your hands up to God right now, just like this, like this like you're surrendering. I break the hardness off of them. See, what happens is the enemy, just, just, just because of life, dust gets on you. Look, you're outside. There's dust in the air. It gets on you. Get enough dust on you and add a little moisture to it, and it becomes like a hard clay like a shell that forms on the outside of you. And it's hard for the things of God to penetrate that shell because of the dust of the earth that's settled on you. But I want to break that off in Jesus' name. And so just with your hands lifted up right now, just allow me to pray for you and allow Holy Spirit to come. And I just see him. I just see him taking the hammer of, of the word of God and just 
just gently tapping it on your shoulder and that thing just, just breaking off. And so, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would just walk, walk through this room and, and just break off of their shoulders, off of their heads, that hardness, that you would remove it from them, and that there would be an openness, a softness, not a weakness, but a gentleness, a tenderness with regard to the word. And I ask you would place within them, in this moment, in this moment right now, I release into them a hunger, a hunger, a hunger for the word of God. The, the Bible, but not just the Bible, for the capital W, the word. And in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among them. Lord, that we would sup daily, that we would daily take time with you and, and that your, a portion of you, the word, would come alive on the inside of us and in that portion would be the solutions for my problems that I'm about to face, for the problems that faces my wife, for the problems that faces my children or grandchildren, for the problems that face me in my job or my business. You are the light of the world. I need you. I need you daily to shine into the darkness that's in front of me, to illuminate my path. For your Lord, um, somebody help me. I can't remember the scripture. A uh, 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 lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Thy word is a lamp. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Yeah, that's what it is. Whew. Wow. And so right now, in Jesus' name, I receive. Just say that. I receive right now a hunger for the word. Help me to sacrifice until it becomes joyful. Help me to sacrifice until it becomes joyful. Help me to sacrifice until it becomes joyful. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, men, you may be seated. Ladies, stand up with me. I see the, I see the word in your hand. And I see you, you pointing like this. Sometimes it's a word of encouragement, but sometimes it's used to, to diminish. Sometimes it's used to bring down. Sometimes it's used. One of the reasons that men struggle with the word of God is because it has been used by those who should be encouraging them with it as a weapon against them. And I see them, instead of the Holy Spirit gently breaking off that crust, I see, I see people, women in their lives, taking in with a sledgehammer, just hitting them with it. Hitting them with it. Hitting them with it. That's not everyone, but if that applies to you, the Word in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. For God so loved the world that He gave the Word. God loved, and out of His love, He gave the Word, Jesus. Jesus is to be what God had given out of His love we can never take the word and make it something of a weapon against those whom we love. And so right now, in Jesus' name, I break off. I, 
Yes, it will be a weapon against demons. Yes, it will be a weapon against evil. But stop calling evil what God calls good. He loves your spouse. He loves the young men in your life. He, yell, he loves those who he's called and made in his image. Now it's time to take and learn how to hold that Bible and to point, but use it to be the encouragement of God. Not critical, but encouraging. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And just lift your hands up to the Lord and just say, Lord, I choose now for the word of God to be part of my life. Help me to encourage and not use as a weapon your word. Help me to love the way you love. Help me to use the word as a weapon of love. To lavish those with love in Jesus' mighty name. Who? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that, 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 that isn't limited to, to just men. That, that, I see that happening with kids as well. Use the word only for love. Only for love. Unless you're using it against darkness. And then make it a fierce weapon. P punish the enemy. Don't punish the ones God loves. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just everybody stand up with me and we'll close. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Okay. So, so you may be here today and you've never received Jesus as Lord of your life. You've never become a Christian. Uh, I mean, you went to church when you were a kid, or maybe not. But, but you know, you are distant from God, and, and you want to, you want to be close to God. You want to give your life to Him. And if that's you, whether you're here or you're watching at home, don't, don't go another minute. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to help you every day. He wants to share himself with you. He wants you to have this amazing relationship with him. And it all begins by what we call being born again. And just like the word states, it's like being born fresh or born anew, like a new life. And here's how it works. Jesus gives you his life and he takes your life, all your mistakes, all your mess-ups, all your junk, all the stuff that you fell short on, he takes it all. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he shed his blood. So he would be able to take all of your sin and put it where it belongs. And that's in hell where all sin belongs. It doesn't belong on you. It doesn't look good on you. So, you know, it's like, and I hope I don't have a stain on my shirt right now, but it's like if I had this stain on my shirt it don't look right. It doesn't belong there. My shirt doesn't look like it could look if I didn't have that stain. You know what he does? His blood washes away all of my stains, washes away all of my sin, all of my guilt, all of my shame, and removes all of that from me, and I can have a brilliant, brand new life in Jesus. 
How many of you know that's a good thing? Bang your hands together. And so if that's you, if that's you, whether you're at home, it doesn't matter where you're at. Look, you may be watching or listening to this five years from now. It doesn't matter when because this is an eternal thing, not a chronological thing. And if that's you and you want to receive Jesus, look, everyone, if you would, please, just, just bow your heads for a moment. This is a really important moment for someone in this room, for someone at home. And if that's you and you want to receive Jesus as Lord of your life, just lift your hands up to him right now and just say this to him. Say, Jesus, come and live in my life. I give my life to you as it is right now with all the stains and all the mess-ups and all the shame and all the guilt and all the problems. I give it to you just as it is and I receive your new life as perfect as it is. Come and live in me. I ask you forgive all of my mess-ups, all of my guilt, past, present, and future. And I receive you as my king. I will be obedient to you from now on. I will seek you and your kingdom with all I have within me. In Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Listen, if that's you, I just welcome you into the kingdom of God. God is bringing, yeah, come on. God is bringing many, many people into the kingdom over these next several months, over this next season, over this next year. I'm telling you, many, many people are going to be coming into the kingdom. And uh, I'm grateful for you that just came into the kingdom. So, you ready to be blessed and sent out? You ready? How many want blessed? Just put your hands up like you say, I want blessed. So, Father, bless them and keep them and make your face to shine on them. Lift up your countenance on them now and give them your peace and your grace. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that no one leaving here would be leaving here filled with guilt or shame, even if they didn't respond. But, Lord, I ask you would gently just pull them into your heart and you love on them and you, and you would just let them know that, hey, look, maybe right now you couldn't respond, but I'm here and I love you, I'm not rejecting you, let me help you work through this. In Jesus' name, and all the people of God said, amen. amen. City Church, go and be blessed. Happy, happy, happy Father's Day. I'll see you next week.
Because I know that you love me Your love never fails You say all things work together for my good Things work together for my good. You say all things work together for my good. And you make all things work together for my good. And you make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. One time. Cause you make all things work together for my good. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. Your love never fails Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Holy, holy is He Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. With all creation I 
with wonder, all shook wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. So the Lord is saying that uh, the enemy has been planting seeds of discouragement in some of us. Some of us have just struggled this week with um, thoughts, with, you know, things that other people did to us or towards us or that we perceived was towards us or who knows. What I know is that the enemy has been going out and casting seeds in our garden in our, our garden here. And what I want to encourage you in what the Lord is saying is that the only way a seed grows is if you water it. Who cares what the enemy is casting? Stop focusing on the seed that he cast. Stop giving it water. Don't water it. It'll die. You have control of the garden of your life. And you get to determine what grows there. You do. You and your relationship with the Lord. And so right now, cast aside the stuff, the junk, the garbage that the enemy has thrown at you this week, this month, this season. Throw it aside. Throw it aside. It's as simple as saying, hey, Lord, I repent for focusing on that. Right now, I'm going to focus on you. There's lots of things that we can do with weeds in the garden. The roots aren't deep. You can pull them out. You can put down weed killer. Can we handle that right now? So look, if you've been feeling discouraged, right now, take a moment with the Lord. Close your eyes and say, Lord, I repent for focusing on the seeds of the enemy. Do that right now. Look, close your eyes. Let's close our eyes. Say, Lord, I repent for focusing on the seeds of the enemy. I pull out the weeds. Lord, renew my mind. Make it fresh. Give me the, the ability right now to drown out everything of the enemy and worship you. Let me receive now new fresh. And so look right now, turn your attention to God. Turn your attention to Holy Spirit. Because here's one thing I know. When the enemy comes in and tries to plant, it's because God is trying to give us something else. And so right now, you have removed what was there and you've created a void where right now, Holy Spirit wants to pour into you and give you something. He wants to fill you. So can we, can we sing that again? Can we just stay on that song? And, and as we sing this again, I want you to focus on what it is the Holy Spirit is filling you with. You know how to do that? Just worship him. He'll do the rest. He'll do the pouring out. He'll do the filling up. You worship him. We worship him.
wanted to share today is uh, Father's Day, and what was laid on my heart is how our Father gave His only begotten Son, how much love that He has for all of us, and just to raise your hands up and receive more of His love, more of His love, open your heart and receive His love, and thank Him today of what He has done. He gave His only Son and the love. I thank you, Lord. His favor be upon you in a thousand generations, in your family, in your children, in their children, in their children. May His favor be upon you in a thousand generations, in your family, in your children, in their children, in their children. May be upon you in a thousand generations in your family in your 
children, their children, their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations, in your family, in your children, in their children, in their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you. Rejoicing is for 